So there's a lot of different things that we could potentially do right now. I have an almost infinite source of diplomacy and arts XP. Everything else is harder to get. Arts XP would let me use a great master. Now this would let me spawn master artists. They create stunning masterpieces that I can use to give me more luxuries, more wealth. Guild training, target a capital city to incre increase population by two. That's big. I mean also golden age. Local reforms boosts regional e uh, efficiency of all regions. So this would be all four of my cities in one go. That is very tempting, but if I wasn't using my power for the Oath of Fealty, then I'd be a little bit more tempted. Colonialism we've seen before as well. Honestly, a lot of the stuff here I'm not entirely convinced is particularly good. Outposts and colonies, yeah, I'd rather keep them as regular outposts. But macroeconomics is fantastic. Vassal prosperity max, oh, and demand fealty. These two, these two we used to great, great effect before, but those are the only two choices. And the problem is I kind of want to go for warfare here. So this is essentially the I'm going to fight everyone tree. The old guard grenadier, an improved grenadier unit. That's, that is very tempting. Old guard cavalry, an increased and improved cavalry unit. Better tactics. Field marshals, forced march being cheaper. Battlefield medicine. I miss so much here. The only issue with commanders is I do not have a reliable source of warfare experience compared to all of my other resources. Now mercenary is an interesting one because these are incredibly, incredibly tough, but they also eat your wealth. I think I can only field about 10 of those units and I'd be totally bankrupt. Let you also convert neutral troops and claim them for yourself. War priests are interesting. If we can monopolize a jungle, that would be cool, but I don't really have a lot of that to be honest with you. Human sacrifice as well. <laughs> I really want to run with this at some point, but I don't think it's what I need right now. It's super tempting to go for one of these two. I, I can't tell you how tempting it is, especially Grandmasters and the Conservatory itself. That's a building that can unlock so much culture. But I think I'm going to have to go for Commanders. We're going to go full military here. We are going to absolutely try and take on the world. And here is my Field Marshal. He's got eight tactics, plus one because of my ability. And he does a lot of cool things. I want to take him into the combat as best I can. It's actually pretty handy as well. I think my capital might just burn some science for a couple of turns. It's really not going to make a huge difference. It's going to shave one or two turns off and in that time I'd rather have more units. Right, let's start making muskets and I think this is where I might have a tiny problem. Obviously I'm using warfare experience to upgrade my troops but I need the warfare experience to then upgrade things. So a war college does make it a little cheaper. So I do have another option to get warfare experience. I could start making steel and weapons. Start to use mining a little bit more. That's not a bad idea. Idea. That would be a way of grinding a bit quicker. I have a very wood-based economy right now. I'm aware of that's what I do. Well, at any rate, I better use my field marshal. I'm going to bring them into combat, start to reinforce everyone. We're producing a lot more troops now. They're all making their way to the front line. In the meantime, we'll just start grinding a little bit more experience. Like that leader level is big deal for me. Some big battles that last turn and the battle for Major King Kong is absolutely ferocious now. These are such promotions units. Luckily though, my militia are, are pretty good. The good thing about promoting myself and going through the tech tree is that they can actually do some really, really good damage. I could use peace. I could use peace imminently. Luckily there is a way of getting peace, but I think I've got to survive one more turn and I don't know if Major King Kong is going to hold. My fight with Persia is equally as brutal, I have to say. But luckily for me, the Field Marshal is now getting involved. Yeah, easy win. Easy win. Gives me loads of warfare XP for that as well, which is brilliant. Grind through the combat as much as we can, as much XP as we can. Fight back, fight hard, upgrade commanders as quickly as we can. Oh, lots of attacks, lots of attacks. The trick to war in this game is to make sure that all of the attacks and all of the damage and all of the fighting is done totally on your terms. You don't want the enemy swarming around you in such a way that you can't stop it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna force this. The AI is not accepting peace. So let's play this turn out, do what we can, get all the victories we can, and then we will force peace on them as a leader over on that tile, but not on this one. All right, well, I better use my my greater leader, my field marshal. Oh no, run out of movement. That's uh, that's annoying. It's a desert. Ah, uh, that's why. Oh, well, we can use another attack. We can get another kill using a different army. There you go. Look at that, just pushing units around, getting more XP. Oh yeah. Oh, we keep getting kills of some very powerful leaders. This is good. Leveling ourselves up whilst we're at it. We've inflicted probably about four or five defeats on the combined French Persian armies, which is 
is looking really, really good now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to culture rush a truce. Bam. We're at peace. Nothing they can do about it. We are now at peace. Out of my lands. Leave me alone. Give me a few turns. I just need a few turns and then I'll be back. <laughs> then I'll be back and I'll be very angry. How about that? And actually, we can use an artist immediately to just give myself another culture power. Should I give myself three turns of science just to unlock standing army nice and quickly? Or do I keep up with the oath of fealty to just keep my wealth going up, my science? And right now I'm gaining 15 science per turn from my vassals. I want that to keep going up. It's the long-term benefit. The long-term benefits. So we'll keep doing that. We've had to do this once before. We are now spending a few turns just reconsolidating our armies, making sure everything is in the right place, defending in the right places, attacking in the right places. I don't want to be caught out again. Plus, I keep having my little outposts destroyed, which is very frustrating. Stop it. I mean, luckily I've got a lot of engineering XP, so it's not a problem. I don't want to have to keep rebuilding them, you know? War College. I want to see. Warfare XP promotion upgrade. I just want to test this. Upgrade to musket is 25. Am I reading this right? No, I think it actually reduces the, ah, uh, to get a leader. Right, that's, that's not, that's pretty good. More leaders is fantastic. Do we want stubborn students or I'm just going to keep paying it. Pay it away. France, look, they're my borders now. You can argue that I'm next to your borders all you want. It's not going to make a difference. They're my borders. So my little outpost of Bursa Ryan is quite strong and I'm actually pretty impressed with the army I have managed to gather around Salty Tech. Ryzantium's production is enough. I've been kicking out a lot of units, like a lot of units. So what I need to do is just make sure that I've got everything in the right place, that we've got the right combinations of units. We don't want too many of one type in any one army, you know? So we're just switching stuff around a little bit, make sure I've got, say, one cavalry, one range, one line, one leader. But my field marshal is looking pretty good. I think Ronda's got to go. Ronda's got to go. So we're going to take Persia on. France is huge and scary, right? We have a look at France, you'll see that power levels are pretty much the same. Persia's weaker. Persia is someone I can push around. Russia's taken over as the leader at the moment. Zulu is pretty weak. Japan's pretty weak as well. So yeah, Persia is who we are going to attack. So I build up more armies in the background. This leader is ridiculously weak. I do not want to go into battle with you. As are you. Mm, let's retire you. And we don't have to worry anymore. I and mean, I can give you a leader five. That's way better. Reforming the government. Do I want to do that? Yes, I think I do. I just want this innovation as quickly as possible. Let's pick it up. Government XP. Luckily, we're getting a lot of now. 31 per turn. Not a, not a huge problem for me. Well, France has immediately gone in on hostilities on me on neutral territory. Okay, well, neutral territory is interesting. That means I can dictate which fights we have and which fights we don't have. But most excitingly, we now have standing army. That's a sixth slot. Bigger armies mean more combat strength by a long way. Grenadiers. Yay. These are so powerful. Curaçaos as well. We have some very strong units on the way to the front line. France, this was a bad time. Very bad time to come and fight me. Especially because I can come out to you and attack you in neutral territory. But you can't come into my land. I might just spend a little bit of time making sure my armies are all entirely upgraded like this one is now pretty powerful. We've got tactics of 10. We've got tactics of 6, which means we get plus 4. And I've made sure that all of my troops are perfect counters for yours. The thing is, I need to get into as many of these little gentle scraps as I can. As long as my units don't die, I grind warfare experience. I can upgrade all of my troops. I can form them into stacks of six. And you can see, even though they have better troops, because we've got six of them, they're spreading the damage out. They can't focus fire on anything reliably. And we've got two kills there. Beautiful. Innovation. Immortals. The old guard from Rosantium has developed a reputation for survivability and has been given the nickname of Immortals by other soldiers. So, both of my unlockable units get extra morale and defense. Oh yes, that actually means that we do need to prioritize unlocking these two before I spend too much of my warfare XP just reforming my army. Oh, and you've just made a vassal for me, connecting up all of our cities. Persia, that is incredibly kind of you. Incredibly kind of you. I will restart hostilities again, remember? This is just in neutral territory. I like fights in neutral territory. They really do just allow me to attack whenever I want. Well, there's another way of making more units, and that is the Raise Army, which is now giving me a must Musket and a grenadier. That's a very powerful combination of units, especially because I can still spawn the artists and rush more culture powers and make more army. That is suddenly a very, very well put together army and it generates me more warfare 
RXB by destroying some very, very talented, very well promoted units on the French side, just thinning down the horde. Most of these fights, because of my ridiculous uh, tactic levels, I might lose a little bit of damage on my weakest unit. I'm just dishing the dirt and the damage on all of the other troops. Like, as soon as you find a set of units that are quite injured like this as well, it's like, I will kill you all. Thank you very much. Thinning the herd. The old guard grenadier is tempting, but I'm going to go for the cavalry first. I believe I've got more of those running around at the moment. Aha. Well, that's intriguing. Persia decides that they want out of this. Now, normally that means that they're feeling vulnerable, that they're feeling threatened. And I like that because they should. They should be. I think we're going to remain hostile. Specifically, I'm going to declare war. Now, I am only hostile with France. I'm not at war. And unfortunately, uh, this army was being a little bit cheeky without a leader, just killing their units. And I, I got sucked into a trap of very promoted units. I have to say, this is the thing about Grandmaster, is the units are just forever ridiculously promoted. So my war with France might have to wait just a little bit, just a smidge. Not super confident about it, to be honest, given how many troops are just littered around. There's some good stuff to come out of this because yes, we're gonna take an eight culture hit on Tilki, and I'm gonna integrate you on the front line, rebuild a ruined town as well. Where's my town? There it is. It's a rubbish town. This one's a little better. This one's pretty good as well. I mean, mm, they're both they're both a little rubbish and they've been eaten up a bit, but there you go. There's a town. Gives me somewhere else to heal. Somewhere else just to keep my troops. We're making raiding attacks on France. I'm hiding back in my own lands to heal and then nipping out again to make little raiding attacks, killing units everywhere I can. Working really nicely. We've really thinned down France's army a little bit. Not infinitely, but a little bit. And reinforcements are on the way. We have a pretty decent system where I'm just shuttling troops from Cal and Billy, Clint, Super Steve all the way through. But the thing about Tilki, which I really like, is that the AI has built a lot of buildings. A lot of buildings. So there's not as much for me to build here as initially feared. And well, I'm just going to start off by using some of my abundance of points just to fix everything that, you know, someone might have pillaged. I don't know who it is that might have pillaged it, but somebody did. On the Persia front, however, this I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic about because I've got cannons. I've got some of my new old guard cavalry and a new level five leader to go with this army as well. Don't forget the leader. Never forget the leader. Swoop in. This is this is reinforcements. This is not a, a proper true army yet, but we've just run through it and immediately taken that city. I see some Persian troops just chilling inside their own borders. We just immediately rout them. I can come and destroy them now. Oh, warfare experience. Don't mind if I do. So by keeping my combat to one front, really, just making little skirmish attacks in France and pushing Persia, what I have been able to do is start pushing all their towns back which is very handy indeed. Now that all of my cities are producing units a lot quicker, we are really beelining now into the Oath of Fealty. I'm using this as many times as I can get away with. My last artist for a little while, I think, it means we can use Oath of Fealty twice in the same turn. It's another 28 population across my empire in this turn, but it gives me more improvement points, more wealth, more research, more culture, just generally boosts my economy whilst I'm just trying to chill. I'm getting so much diplomacy XP per turn, but it's becoming an issue. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to build up now my social fabric. Eight wealth per turn is pretty useless, but it stops me from capping out and it will be useful later in the game if that's something I want to pursue. My field marshal's level 10 army though is beginning to absolutely kick bottom and take names. It's just romping through, especially these little settlements with only militia. I mean, what are you going to do? Bam. Everyone routed, wealth gained, warfare gained. It's tempting to push on towards the seventh age very quickly, but I'm just back filling a tiny bit, especially for things like public works. This gives me huge upgrades to sanitation, region level, improvement points. There's a lot of cool stuff and I want to dip into that. And I also want to make sure that we are working ingots because these things, well, they can be used for some very fun stuff indeed. Metalwork into arsenal. Two ingots into two rifles, which both give four warfare experience. Oh yeah. Now that's something I'm going to try and replicate across a lot of my different cities, especially especially the ones that have a couple of population spare that aren't really doing anything, like all of these forest and grassland workers. No, 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 no. Clint, you can do better. Get a deep mine going and we'll go from there. But yeah, we need as much warfare XP as we can get. And that's a huge boost. I reckon we can get that to 40, 50 per turn. Egypt wants to restore neutrality. Yeah, all right. I like being able to go into war on my own terms. So that's quite handy for me. Is this my first attack that's going to actually take a Persian city in a long time? Oh my Lord, we just walked through. Yes, yeah, 
Yes, that's a Garda. Oh, this is a huge city. What a triumph. That is a big, big take for me. Sean Kelly, get in here. You're my biggest vassal. I need you to work. I need you to bring this into my nation because this is suddenly, I think, the best option for my next region. Look at all of these towns. Look at all these improvements. Yes, 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 yes. Envoy, get in here immediately. There's the blast furnace. There's another arsenal. We've got two now. Two all locked in and working. Another huge eight warfare experience per turn. Right, here we go. Here we go. What this means is that we can upgrade commanders fully as quickly as possible, but also make sure that in any moment we have maximum leaders. All of our troops are upgraded to the full rank. Don't want to have to be fighting weak units on the front line at any point. That's our big, big thing that we need to change here. It's like this. I was just able to make a leader level six in this army so that my cavalry army could go down and just shut down these catapults that are trying to amass on my borders. How very dare you? I mean, you can fling rocks at me all you want. But I will chomp through you. I tell you what, their defense is pretty good. I guess they're very powerful against cavalry, aren't they? Once we break through those, we were doing a little bit better. I'm also starting to expand my towns a little bit. We unlocked level three towns. It basically means another six wealth and production and a little bit more region level. Rhizantium had been region locked for a little bit. Now it's growing again. I wasn't too worried by that because I was growing it with all of my policies, such as promote tourism. Even Zulu wants neutrality now. Yeah, we hope you've learned your lesson. No, 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 France. No, 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 no. You don't get to escape. As long as I can continue picking off the occasional French troop and grind warfare experience via this method, I mean, why would I ever let you go? Public quarters can now be upgraded to poor houses. Seems uh, a little harsh, but it works well. And we can also now upgrade trash heaps to things that give more sanitation. I mean, this is fantastic. But right now it's warfare experience. This is what I'm really after. So blast furnaces and arsenals. Prioritize these. Warfare experience all the way. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how well the 11 tactics of our field marshal takes on the city of Ronda. Again, very heavily defended, but I've managed to catch it with a lot of their troops absent. A lot of their troops absent. In fact, actually, that first attack was enough for me to then levy the walls with my second attack. That's why I like attacking cities with two attacks in the same turn. You can often get results like that, but another big city falls. Wow, we've made some good gains on Persia. Lord Pauly. Again, another very big candidate for a city. Do you need to fix a couple of towns here? But I'm sure that's fine. Oh my goodness, my power score has actually now gone above France's for the first time in a long time. We, we are making, we're making gains. People need education? No, I'd rather pay the wealth. I don't want to educate my people. Goodness, what a ridiculous concept. Now we've taken another little vassal from Persia, this time the vassal of Susa, just below Lord Pauly, pushing them back quite nicely now. They've got huge armies surrounding RB Hedge, but I've got walls and a very defensible set of units here, so go on. Give me a go if you can. They have taken out an outpost, which is a bit annoying, but I'm not going to mind. Not with El Truand in charge. You keep this city safe. You do it. And another one falls. This time, Sardis. Again, good, good candidate for integration. Welcome, helicopter kicker. I believe Persia now have two major domains left. Regions left. Three of them, sorry. Three left. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we only take them down to one, and then we make sure we take all of the vassals that we can up till that point, because otherwise all the vassals will disappear when we take them over. Each O for fealty now is worth 18 population. The biggest thing I'm seeing is the huge increase in improvement points. At the moment, I'm getting 64 of those per turn from my vassals. So it, it doesn't matter what I do in my actual cities for improvement points. It's just, it just works. The grand city of Babylon. I like the fact that for once, I've actually turned up with a cannon to blow the walls up. <laughs> <laughs> just having one cannon in an army makes such a huge difference at just destroying a city. Because it means if you get three rounds of combat in round two, you're already attacking militia. And if you can kill militia, you just got three reign, haven't you? Look at this. Literally just the towers and we've won. In fact, I'm going to force march you straight in. What are you going to do? Second attack. Yep, <laughs> there's literally no defense because they're all routed. Bam, Babylon Falls. Cartesian, welcome. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Still three regions for Persia. They're just making regions now. They're that desperate, I think. Egypt just wants to downright be my friend. Interesting. They have a lot of power and I could probably get a good alliance from them. It's whether or not that would be in my best interests. Egypt has six regions, a whole amount of stuff, but they haven't gone for any form of government that is particularly warry. So I'm not expecting them to put the most resistance up. It's just whether or not I want to fight them or if we just go for another alliance. We've already seen what subjugating Sweden's done. Handy, isn't it? Very 
very handy. No, I think for now we're going to reject it. Until I've properly conquered someone, we don't need to be taking deals like that. I think what I might do though is try and subjugate Persia. We've taken their bigger cities by a long way. I will offer them peace and we'll move my troops on. I think Egypt has got to be the next target. Yeah, no peace for you, Egypt. I do apologize, but you are very, very attackable right now. May I just say, it is a pleasure removing brickworks from an empire. <laughs> Just, that's so rubbish. No, we need warfare experience, and the only way we're going to do that is with rifles. We're already up to 53 per turn. That makes a big difference. If you're wondering why I'm not making settlers, by the way, it's purely because I just, I don't want to. It probably would be good at this point to be maximizing it, but I'm letting my government XP overflow in order to start picking up organization social fabric. This just means so many extra tiles in all of my big cities, and it means, for, for instance, cities like Ryzantium have more space to build more mines, get more warfare experience all the good stuff persia peace amazing well we'll try and make a treaty with them now which is pretty easy when you can immediately spawn an envoy and send it over yay two nations down you wouldn't want to be egypt in this position would you you really really would not well seeing as we've stopped one fight we're going to start another now in france well they are a huge threat thormate and i have an ability slash opportunity here just to immediately run in and take the vassal of Nantes. thank you so much perkins d this is quite the aqua position for us so look after it we are also now heading towards i'm daft i really want to reclaim this city crossbows no 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 get off get back we will win these fights i'm just going to invite the french in to attack these cities because then i can run my units around and do a lot of damage without actually needing to leave the safety of my healing okay here come the french as expected they are rushing my city but that's again not a bad thing it means we get to defend in our own territory we've just picked up reason one more tech to unlock the next age. As mentioned, I am tempted to go for the Age of Aether. This allows us some interesting options. Well, let's just start picking some units apart, shall we? My leader ability is very much gaining me the upper hand here. Totally destroyed that, and we'll force march them back into the city just to protect it. Oh, here's a fun one. Max combat XP. Yes, please. Thank you. Just means all of my units can now achieve a level beyond what we had before. Actually, Sweden's being a fantastic ally because Sweden is sending huge armies armies towards France and is really distracting them. Also keeping Persia busy. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have crippled the strength of Sweden over the uh, course of this game, so they stand no chance. But whilst I can do it, it uh, works really well for me. Yeah, 900 for a chaos event. That's fine. We've got 400 coming in per turn at the moment. In fact, I'm going to spend another 400 now for more oaths of fealty. Another 20 pop in. Speaking of, we can now close out this age if we want to. Now, Age of Harmony, we could go to Age of Harmony if we wanted to try and win via religion, which would involve spread spreading to, what, 66% of the world? Quite tough. I'd like to go to the Age of Aether if possible. However, I'm still building balloons. I need a turn or two to finish my balloons. So I'll go back and just research a couple of bits that I've missed. If AI starts jumping ahead, and then I can start throwing gold into balloons. I just, it's a bit of a waste. I don't want to be doing that if I can help it. Sorry, Egypt. Time to pull you into this as well. Oh, have you got an alliance with Russia? I don't think I, no, I'm not at war with Russia. That's good. Just open borders. Sometimes you're like, oopsie, but not in this instance right they've got crossbow mercenaries and knights in this city that's fine we can do a little bit of damage against the walls here oh yeah walls are down several of the units are destroyed and you come to finish it off city falls major region of egypt destroyed I mean, this doesn't look like an original egyptian city but it's no longer welcome sharky baits oh what's a bad time to move out of your city that especially if i spend a tiny bit on force march i need to get the force march's half price ability i am wasting tons of experience right now Here's another one. The awesome Aki. Battlefield medicine. Okay, yeah, that's pretty handy. As long as I don't move, I can heal to full. I shall have to keep that in mind. Oh my goodness. Arts XP from bricks. I, I refuse to take that. Okay, Persia. Wow, well, actually, we've got a pretty decent choice of treaties here. 24 knowledge would give me, well, more than a quarter extra, but 23 culture would mean that I could cycle through and increase the population of my vassals faster. I think I might alternate between knowledge and culture. Let's go for culture this time. I think they should accept that. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Organization, another social fabric. Here we go. Borders are getting cheaper and cheaper. We are really seeing vassals expanding. They're the ones really benefiting from this. All of my vassals are getting bigger and bigger borders now. That all means more tribute for me. We're up to 111 points from vassals. We 
have four balloons. All I need is one more. I'll buy it because I'm impatient. Age of Aether. Here we go. The next Egyptian city has been taken. Welcome, Hardy. France is protecting Imdaft very, very carefully, which of course they should do. It's a wonderful city. But whilst they're doing that, my general is just running around the field, killing all of their units repeatedly until they give up this city. I am winning this skirmish. Don't mind. I, we, can, we can drag this out as long as you want. This is why you need to be so careful on Grandmaster. They just have leaders with lots of tactics scattered around. There's plus six here. Luckily for me, this army has plus 11. So we're getting the full five tactics. But do you have to be a tiny bit careful to make sure you don't end up sending your troops into some sort of trap? But no, we got a good kill there. Lose a population in Rosantit? How dare you insinuate? I'd be happy with that. Ah, Persia has accepted the alliance. Huge amount of bonus culture, that 23 per turn. Excellent. That means we'll just get our culture power. Probably another of a turn taken off the cooldown. Beautiful. A little update as to where we are moving and turn 164 now. Five regions, 23 vassals. You can have a look at the sort of population mass we have compared to everyone else by looking at 473 people of my religion. Mobility. Forced march domain power cost reduced. Oh yeah. I think this should be another little victory for me. Excellent. Pushing now into Anshan. Now renamed Flying Thunder. Oh, that's interesting. We're right on the cusp here. I want the Age of Ether, so does Russia, but Egypt just wants to go to the Age of Revolution. Look at that. Everyone at the same point. Everyone doing the same thing. That is always nice to see, although I do want to be the person that gets here first, so maybe I Eureka here for 185 knowledge. That would take two turns off it. Or we can just trust that we're going to get there first. Don't know. We'll see how we go. I tell you what, right, rebuild room. Don't, don't destroy my towns. Look, my, my troops are, they're, they're ruining your lands right now. I don't want to have to come back and defend my own. Yeah, I'm going to treat myself to one little Eureka. I want to be the one that pushes this forward. I don't want to have to mess around here. Oh, Paris has left itself open. They moved all of their army out to attack me. All right, let's just bring my cannon into a single combat with Paris. If we can just get the walls down, then I think I can probably force march one of my other units into the city, or we just take it. Okay, yeah, that's a big blow to France, that. Oh, I mean, I immediately use their city to attack with the Falcon. This one's yours. Egypt is the front, but I am very much outnumbered on right now, so I'm tempted to try and peace out with Egypt just for a little bit. Again, it's all about just making sure we're not fighting too many people at the same time. Let's offer them peace. I've taken a bunch of cities from them, but I only have two major armies on their front, and they are swarming me. They would be silly. They would be very silly to take that deal, but they may feel threatened enough by me to kind of start considering it. What this means is that I can focus on sending all of my forces towards France. I am force marching left, right, and center at the moment in order just to get into as many fights as I can. Really, really push them. Destroy units. Route them. Push them back. This is good. There you go. Egypt accepted. Good. Oh, a couple of their armies have actually got round into Super Stevo, though, and they have taken out one of the towns here. The Tower of the Battle of Tech Poet. No. Yeah, just slipped through and uh, killed the militia. We didn't really do much damage that. Never mind. Super Stevo itself is much better defended. We've got armies nearby that can swing round, but maybe, maybe peace with France right now wouldn't be the worst idea either. Especially now we've taken the city of Imdaft back. Oh, we've missed you. Get back in. Again, though, France have deployed their army so hard on my front line. I'm now getting round the back of them, and we've taken another major city. They've lost about 60 population worth of cities in the last two turns. My armies are a bit of a mess, though, Garrett Gowan, so I'm gonna need you to hold tight for a second, and I'm thinking maybe temporary peace with France wouldn't be the worst idea. Although, again, it's the force march. This makes makes everything a little better. Double move, take a tiny bit of damage, but I mean, who really minds when you're taking vassals every turn? Plus 121 chaos per turn, by the way. <laughs> feels pretty ridiculous. Yeah, my armies are everywhere. I am scattered. I'm broken. I'm at risk of taking a major hit here. I'm going to offer peace. I know I have France on the ropes, but trust me, I can regather my strength and go again faster than they can. And cities like Super Stevo, this is not one I want to see take a bunch of damage for no reason. I need to be very protective of my heartland cities here. There you go. France has accepted peace. We're at war with no one. Absolutely no one. We have some time to recover. We have some time to get to the age of Aether and use 
use that tech to push our cause just a little bit further forward. Finally above 100 research per turn as well. Oh, very good. Very good. So here we are, the Age of Ether. It's appeared on all of the mountains around me. It should get absorbed into my empire pretty quickly. We can work it nicely. Some cities have a lot of it, others do not. But that's of only semi-importance. One thing I could do is rush for mad science, which lets me turn that new resource into lots of knowledge, which would be very cool. But I think I'm going to start with lighter than air. This unlocks a couple of bits for me, but most importantly, it unlocks airships, which effectively are bombers. That's something that I feel would be very helpful. Whilst I recuperate my losses against France, whilst I try and cling on to an alliance with Egypt, I'm moving my army back around now to Japan, who I believe has declared war on Sweden. So yeah, they want Uppsala. Well, now I'm in this war, you're going to have to deal with me as well. Now that I've unlocked everything in commanders, I'm prioritizing making sure that all all of my units are up to date, including early machine guns. Oh yeah, these are powerful. I can also use battlefield medicine a lot. Now that I have a lot of spare warfare experience, it's just brilliant. It's just awesome. Every culture power, by the way, still going into the oath of fealty. It makes sense to me. 28 population each time. Why not? Here we go. So all the aether is now being put into my lands. I need harvesters, which take specialists. Now these are the more difficult form of improvement points to put down. Currently only resin is producing them and I believe it's all coming from a building. Yeah, University and Academy of Science. Luckily there are other improvements that make them, such as literary salon. That's pretty cool. More universities will always help as well. France have gone straight back for hostilities. I love it. Fine. I was going to move all of these units away. It looks like France wants a fight. You know what? I, okay, sure. I like a nemesis. I like a repeated fight and bringing all these troops back. I could have gone to declare war on Japan with a bit more force, but no. Back we come. Our first harvester though. Oh, that's good. Taking loads of this beautiful, beautiful aether. That'll come in handy later, especially because when I start to upgrade all of these buildings, they will all need power. Yeah, machine guns make these fights a lot easier. As you'd expect machine guns to make any fight easier, to be honest with you. The fact that France have insisted on opening hostilities with me is fantastic because I'm just picking off units in the neutral borders between the land they raised. This is, this is amazing. So Sorry, France, you started this, and unfortunately for you, I'm going to end it, because I keep finding all of your generals just around and about, unable to fight back, unable to do anything. All right, let's just quickly force march, bring a cannon in. The cannon will make short work of these walls. Yeah, look at that. Pretty easy, right? And again, it's just super cheap. Force march means that we can just march into cities and double attack them. If you can double attack a city, it's as good as yours. You take a little bit of damage doing it. It is normally worth it, though. Welcome, Dr. Bobby. Starting to rebuild the stuff that lost as well. Come back into my land, fix everything. I need these cities to thrive. I need them to grow. Toulouse has now fallen as well. Bring in the Skeptical Bear. And what will keep it safer? Well, planes, which we are going to now start building as soon as we can. I'm also going to go for Mad Science. Start converting my ether into beautiful knowledge. This is a really, really good use of it. Hmm, do I want every single harvester that I've ever made to break or pay a ridiculously small amount of gold? I'll do that. And we have a treaty with Egypt. That is big news. We're now getting another, is it like something 30 science? It was something like that. So we've just 156 now. Now sure, we'll be dragging them along with me in terms of tech. That's okay. We don't mind that. My first bomber is also ready. Well, that's quite exciting. I think I shall send you over to deal with France. A couple of upgrades. <laughs> Level 2. No, not 2. 1, 2. 12 tactics. And another huge French city falls. Welcome Zaf. Down in Japan, another city falls. And some of you are now getting double names because, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of vassals now. <laughs> Actually, speaking of, Sean Kelly, you are the next and best city that I can bring into my empire. You're the sixth city. Welcome. My first job is to basically go around making sure that everything that uh, is in your city is not on fire. I don't know who possibly could have set everything on fire. It seems like a very harsh thing to have done. I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it at all. This is where bombers can be a lot of fun. Just round Randomly dropping bombs on people, it's basically three damage. It takes a little bit of time to build up an air force that's super powerful, but once you get one, oh, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. Cartesian is the next to be integrated. My culture's taken a bit of a hit doing this, but we now have seven regions, and this one is absolutely massive. Don't mind if I do. Again, half of the problem, though, is just finding everything that's broken and fixing it. The city of Wuhan falls. Some victories, ooh, you kind of ask yourself, do I want this city? 
Who knows? But mad science is now complete. Excellent. Now I can turn ether into knowledge. Sewers and grocery stores. Now this is the sort of thing that's going to become very handy for me. So I'm going to urbanize now. I do want to dip in and get third town after a little while as well. Because a lot of my cities, well, they're struggling to grow. And towns very much are going to help with that. Nothing to see here. The French didn't steal the vassal of Perkins Deep. No, 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 no. Nothing to see. Now Kobe Falls. How many cities does Japan have? Five regions, loads of power. I think this war might be quite beneficial for us, you know? Luddite result. Hmm, no. Peace with France? Uh, I'm gonna continue that war for now. I mean, a treaty with them would be probably worth more than wiping them out. A lot of knowledge, a lot of culture at stake there. We don't really have many good cities. Moscow? Ruin? Portland. I might take Portland as I'm here. Plus, you know, Portland's a cool name for a town. Bam. Crossing a river? Doesn't matter. It's my it's all good. Yeah, you know what, France? I'll let them have peace. I'll let them have peace. We've subjugated them. We have pushed them to the point of oblivion. Besides, there are other targets, namely Russia, Japan. As long as we're fighting somebody, the war machine continues. The thing I like about attacking Japan is that they're using mostly medieval to renaissance units with my mounted gunpowdered units and my very, very, very high tactics. Yeah, these are good fights for me. Extra power from petroleum and coal. I feel like I don't really need that but I also don't need a thousand wealth because that's uh it's not very much I, people keep trying to call me into alliances but if I do that then I'm going to end up declaring war on people randomly so always say no to alliances unless you are the one that really wants it anyway there's urbanization you know I think I really like the idea of a land ship so yeah let's go do that I'm getting 76 government xp per turn at the moment so again organization is beginning to push this up I want to get it to the maximum of minus 50 it's cities like like Ryzantium. These are the ones that are really, really appreciating having cheaper resources or tiles because this city needs to get bigger. It needs to get a lot bigger. In order to do that, I'm actually going to cancel my treaty with Sweden. I'm going to re-up it. They don't update. So I want more resources than the sort of 10, 11 research it's giving me. I need more than that. Well, now that my war with France has ended, guess what? Russia is coming for you now. He's coming for you. Canterbury, Marseille. Oh, these look like very tasty targets. In fact, again, Again, just force marching my troops because, you know, I'm getting 77 warfare XP per turn because we're making arms at home in vast quantities. I know it's not the most efficient thing, but it means I'm giving myself at least two or three more forced marches every turn to just go and do stuff like that. Actually, you know what? I could just do it again. If I really wanted to. Or actually, this army could do it. Which movement have I got? Oh no, I can cross the river. There you go. It's never good to attack across a river. 40% defense adds up when there are walls and things. Look at these upgraded troops. These are cool. So two cities down in the first turn of attacking Russia. Sorry about that. Ursa's here. What am I actually going to do? Super Stevo and Tilki. I'm very, very tempted to release them back to being vassals. They're producing quite a lot of warfare XP for me, which is a really good thing. But they're so damaged by the war. The space is the issue and the population isn't getting there. So I think I'd actually get more from them if they were vassals along with everything else. But we'll, we'll keep them for now. If something pops along and I'm like, hmm, let's upgrade to something bigger and better, then maybe I'll go for it. Like helicopter kicker two is ready to go. Need some more government XP. I like I like switching things up, you know? We like taking different strategies, trying different stuff as we go. That's the that's the fun thing. Hello, Hiroshima. I'm here now. Haha. -ha. Mind if I borrow your walls just to hit some units? Thank you. Oh, that's cheeky. Sweden, you cheeky little thing. Japan counterattacked whilst my units were away and pushed everyone out, which is a little bit annoying. In fact, did I just lose? I think I might have lost those planes. Oh, that's really annoying. And then Sweden ran in and took the city. It's like, oi, that was mine. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love the, the cheekiness. That, that is opportunistic at its absolute best. But it doesn't stop it being mightily annoying. Oh no, I think my planes flew off. I think they flew off. It's okay. I was like, God, if that just like gave me two losses just randomly, that would be really annoying. Sometimes planes do a lot of damage. Sometimes they don't. But it's three damage. That's the thing you got to remember. It's always three damage. Well, at least until it starts getting countered. Then it's not three. Then it's anything but three. Then it's very expensive. One of the best things about this is that Russia and Japan are actually fighting 
hitting each other and they're doing more damage to each other than they are me. It's like, you've got bigger problems right now. Exotic metallurgy. Amazing. We just push ahead to rocketry. I think we should. I think we should push ahead to rocketry. I feel like we are ready to evolve into something special. Now we have land ships though. Oh my lord. Oh yes, these things, these things are, well, they're pretty brutal, you know? They're made of metal, they're absolutely massive, and they've got big old guns. Bam. Oh, 200 damage. They do so much against range units. It's, it's, it's actually quite disgusting. Yeah, I'm going to be using a lot of my warfare XP to be upgrading these things. A lot of that. Oh, that's what bombers do really well. Destroy all of the fortifications before I even arrive. Sweden says they cancel the alliance because they question whether we're truly committed to peace. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? I offered France an embassy, by the way. They rejected it. So I can't get extra science with them just yet. France, are you sure? Are you sure this is a fight you want to be picking with me? Don't know if it is, you know. Oh, Japan has got several cities named the same thing. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but sure. Yeah, the tanks make uh, pretty short work of this, I'll be honest. Yeah, bam. They they like killing militia. Bam. Another one taken, Vologda. Oh, better furnaces. Amazing. I like it when you tech up and randomly just get upgrades to things that you hadn't had before, like steam trawlers. Oh, excellent. Oh, watching the AI just kill itself around my fights. Yes, weaken yourselves. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, Sweden. Do you not want all of this science? What's going on? Don't make me raise you. That is absolutely meant as the threat that I, <laughs> I made it sound. As I will. I will raise you to the ground. I'm actually very tempted to keep my government XP topped up. I'm going to go for organization next turn. But once we go to the next age, we have to start doing things with government XP. So I don't want to spend it all unnecessarily. Not right now. Hmm. No. Why is every Japanese settlement called Kobe? What's what's happening here? Are there no other settlements? Is that it? <laughs> is that all Japan is? Luckily for me, Sweden did end up losing control of the vassal that they took from me, which, you know, in itself isn't necessarily a good thing. It means I can now walk right back into it and take it, which is good with my land ships. What are you going to do? You've got no leader in here, which means I've got 50% bonus, which means you can't do a thing. Ah, ah, ah. If only I was healing on combat victory. That is something I do kind of miss a little bit. Can I own every Kobe in the world? I'm hoping I can. You better believe. I'm gonna give it a go. City of Novograd Falls. Pushing now into deep Russian territory. In fact, how much Russia actually got left? Oh, we've managed to whittle them down to four regions pretty quickly. Oh dear, Russia. That's a shame. We've taken the science lead now. We're pushing the world into age eight. The age of rocketry. Build a space center. Try and be first onto the moon. We'll go on then. Well, first thing I'm going to do is immediately go for rocketry so that I can, well, try and go for the moon. Next choice we need to make is the Age 8 National Spirit and there's a whole bunch of them available to us right now. One thing to remember at this point is that not every domain is equal. Exploration, for instance, we're only getting 10 per turn, but warfare, 84 per turn. So if we go for something exploration focused or engineering, which is 16, we're going to struggle. Diplomacy is doing pretty good. Diplomacy is up at 124, although a lot of that is from my vassals. And Arts XP is also doing good. So in my head, Warfare, Diplomacy, or Arts, these are the ones we probably need to go down. Well, Warfare, this gives us special operations, which unlock a couple of useful units, make my bombers a little better, and lets me do something called a Drone Strike, which instantly kills leader units in an army. Now that is very, very useful because without a leader unit, we effectively gain an automatic 50% bonus. Diplomacy has International Finance, which basically is, do you want to be rich? And if the answer to that is yes, then brilliant. If it's not, then it's great. It also is the vassal one. So extra vassal prosperity maximum. That's really big. That is sort of tempting. And then political science is more ideology based. Doing weird things. Generating all needs for my regions. I mean, welfare state is pretty good as well. And then with arts, we can either go for media conglomerate, which is all about generating a bit of gold and a bit of culture or pop culture where you spawn celebrities. I know. This also lets us go for social fabric wildcards, but uh, that's not a bad bad idea because that is something we could probably utilize. I've got 43 vassals though. I feel like I should probably continue to use those. So this time we're going to go for international finance. Spend wealth, make wealth. Done. This one just gives me 5,000 wealth. Cool. I'll immediately take that. And we want to save our wealth up now as much as we can. Got proper armed units all with guns. Apart from my person in a Napoleonic outfit, he just rocks up. He rocks up and does whatever he wants. We don't argue. We don't complain. Small end 
Minsk now falls as well. And Nagoya shortly after. This just sort of gives you an impression of the sort of combat power we're dealing with right now. <laughs> Did you see that? The walls almost got taken out in one hit. This is the Battle of Pompeii. Like a volcano, I'm coming through and melting the defenses away quite drastically. Oh, I love the fact that my units are taking the time to destroy all of their units before taking out the last wall. That feels unnecessarily thorough. I love it. Look at Russia though. They've got so many units around. They're doing their best to create a situation where they have so much going on. I physically cannot wade through them. It's true Russian strategy actually. Just hundreds of units everywhere. Cardiff now falls, which leaves Russia, I believe, with only a couple of cities. Leipzig, Sphere, there's Moscow there. I think there's another couple of interesting looking cities. Only two regions though. Thing is, I just get little combat kills. Take a unit and use my really cheap forced march, which I can use about three times a turn just on my normal warfare XP, just to push forward. I'm ignoring all of the Russian armies, just pushing through, cutting through, taking vassals, taking domains, leaving them with nothing. Speaking of, do I just remember Remove them from the game now. I, uh, that is the tempting thing to do. In fact, the same army is going to take up three vassals in the same turn. Blimey. No rest. Look how much the health has been whittled away just from forced marching. Bam. Chaos, 240. I, I've got quite a lot of chaos in this particular run. I, I don't know if you've noticed. City of Edo and 37 population. Apart from Ryzantium, I wonder if there's as high a population city on the map. Well, there certainly won't be after this. Oh, the tower somehow survived. That is annoying. No matter. Another forced march. Always forced marches. Never anything more, never anything less. 18 population killed. Oh, blimey. That makes me feel a little bit bad. 1% of my wealth is interest per turn. I like compound interest. There we go. That's another 100 per turn, but that'll start to increase quite a bit now. 300 government XP ready to go. Let's make a peaceful transition to a level 8 government. Now, the choice is kind of one of three things. Either we use our religion to give us pretty much everything else. We abandon our religion to go for democracy, which is very much about knowledge, defense, diplomacy, or communism, which is very much about removing luxuries and giving us production. Now, when I decide this particular choice, one thing I've got to remember is the fact that I have a huge religion. More than, I'd say, half, if not three quarters of the world follow my religion at the moment, so I'm actually tempted to just plug into that a little bit. Last time I checked, there was like 400, 500 people following my religion, something like that. So something like this. Government XP for religious population, being able to get engineering, exploration, warfare, arts XP, all just from my religion. There's a lot of cool stuff there. There's also abilities to get a lot of knowledge from democracy, and I am tempted by that. And communism is also quite a lot of fun. I like the idea of being able to produce battle tanks faster. Housing, food, ideology, removing the need for goods is quite useful as well. I think because we've gone so heavily on religion today, I will go fundamentalist, but a lot of these choices are quite good. Now, because we've selected the fundamentalists, I am now in a faction with all of the other ones. The more pressure, the more ideology we pump out, the better we do in the faction and we start to unlock new things. Good that we use this as much as we can. Right, Sacred Palace, done. Currently, I am now earning less government XP per turn, only six, because we've lost all of our buildings, which is a real problem. Oh, I hate that when you, when you move on from government, but government XP for every 10 religious population of the region with the Sacred Palace. It's not going to give me any anything right now, but it means that I can go through to all of my cities and just make sure they are now building the sacred palaces. Some cities will take longer to build this than others. <laughs> yeah, four turns in Byzantium, 23 turns in other cities. Wow. I think at this stage of the game, it's just worth kind of pressing my advantage, even if there's no clear victory condition available to me at this point. The fact that I have this much military tech, that kind of means I should probably use it. I should kind of push, keep going, keep attacking, especially when Russia have very little that they can stop me with. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. This army is getting weary now. Oh, I lost my general. I lost my general. I have to promote a new one in. Oh, hello Zulu. France is coming at me. Japan. It's all kicking off. I think Zulu are going to get a little bit fronty with me now. It's good to know who our next target are, you know? Sometimes it's difficult to, to be certain. Come on, Perm. Let me in. Let me in. Let me kill all of your units, please. Brutal battle. Brutal battle, but we are head-on assaulting some very powerful things because I just need to get this result done. This is very much a some of you will die situation.
salvation here, but it is a sacrifice I am willing to make to knock Russia out of this game. There you go, done, out. All of their units become barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> I always love when that happens. It's like, oh god. Watching the barbarians just attack everything is mesmerizing and terrifying at the same time. Oh, there we go. Sweden now wants to get our science shared. All right, fine. Whatever. Whatever. We've got rocketry now. Let's go logistics. Increase our army size. Why not? Okay, let's try and get to the moon. Fund an exploration agency. I can do that. Fund a military space agency. We can do that as well. There you go. I think that is a success. Kyoto has now fallen as well. Ooh, Berlin. We've even taken our first Zulu city, which is good, because they stole one of the Kobe's. Ah, oh, how dare you? How dare you? Sorry, France. You declared hostilities on me. May I just remind you? So this means you don't mind me attacking. I'm pretty sure that's what this means. Well, you've got a lot of units in that city. None of them are leaders, so I am very strong compared to you right now. It might take a couple of hits. I might lose the odd unit, but again, we are piling the pressure on here. I'd rather be a little bit aggressive and just turn the screw. Oh yeah, well, nope, it doesn't matter. We managed to take over the city anyway. Where's the last one? Bordeaux. Here it is. Luckily, I can force march a unit about 500 times in order to make my way over there instantaneously. Sure, this costs me a load of health and a load of war XP, but what else is it for, eh? Bam, France are eliminated. Oh, you can hear my game breathing a sigh of relief, can't you? It's like, oh, someone else that I don't have to render every turn. Goodbye, Berlin. Hey, there we go. Look, Look, we've got probes out now. That worked as well. All of the spare culture. It's wonderful. Just gonna use a couple of powers. Keep researching through the tree as fast as I can. Ah, seven. Seven slots. Brilliant. Next up tanks. Loads of Japanese cities all being taken in the same turn. We've taken Durban, we've taken Osaka. I would love it if I could take Fukuoka this turn as well. One more forced march saved up. Again, we're losing the occasional troop here and there, but that's fine. As long as we do the main damage, as long as we take over the cities, that's kind of what we're after at the moment. Armies can always be reconsolidated, moved back around. We have a human in space. Look at this, racing through stuff here. Fukuoka has been taken. I think Japan must be down to pretty much one city now. What a shame. What a shame for them, eh? Heavy machinery. Done. I think I'll finish up with Enterprise. There you go. We're on the moon first. Ah, wonderful. We could even start a crisis edge now if we really wanted to. What that does is forces us into the age of visitors. Now, it's a lot of fun, but right now I'm not sure if I can or really be bothered to be fighting off a huge alien invasion. So instead, I'm gonna... Oh, I miss, I miss my tier three government. It's... It was so good. I'm gonna start spawning more troops and assault rifles, submachine guns, all of the good stuff. Extra faithful buildings. Yeah, that's something we like to see. It sure is nice being able to bring in seven units into a battle. Just that numerical advantage means that we are absolutely running through combat and Japan is out. Saying that though, Zulu is another th matter. Look at all these units. Oh my lord. So many to have to fight through. So many. I'm having to use force march in order to just smash through as many units units as I can in a single turn. Zulu can't put more than five in an army. So again, numerically, we have a big advantage here. Okay, we're beginning to push armies into Zulu now, just beating back the hordes. But I want to get out of the Age of Rocketry as soon as possible, and Age of Information is the easiest way out, so we're going to take it. Okay, and we're applying the same tactics we used on Russia against Zulu, avoiding their army, going round it and taking their settlements. You might think it's a bit of a wimpy way of dealing with things, but no, I think it's sensible. Here we go, making big, strong attacks. I bomb the walls with planes, get rid of them before we arrive, and then we hit the big cities. Again, taking some substantial damage. That was my new unit, by the way, the one that died, so it's not too bad. Oh, we've taken everyone out except the wall. Or the tower, I should say. All right, we'll force march and, and hide in that city then. You can't do any damage to me. And next turn, I'll heal. Excellent. Bam, another one taken. This is where having hundreds and hundreds of warfare XP comes in. Pretty handy, because we can get, oh look, a 36 population city. We better get in there before any of the enemy gets gets in here. Just run through, run through, use the tanks. It's kind of blitzkrieg in a weird way. Damn, another one taken. Now Nanjin falls. I don't think Zulu have got many cities left now, aren't you? Two. Ha, huh, that was spectacularly quick. Pushing ahead, forging ahead with most of the world under our control, we go into age nine, the age of information. Now we need to make the internet, which in itself is sort of worrying, and smartphones. Oh no. So we've got a few options here. We can either trigger an AI crisis and use rogue AI to, well, beat back machines or we can launch into space with loads of production 
or we can build an angel network which is essentially satellites around the world that fire lasers on people I, I like that one I mean or we could try and complete all the social fabrics but where's the fun in that I think we're gonna start with global networks and then go from there can we take Zulu out this turn I tell you what that would make my turns a lot quicker yep well that's one city down I believe this might be it oh sorry there's a tower and a balloon oh no not quite not quite oh have you just made a region overseas oh that is the most annoying thing you could have done fine I'll tell you what they're doing they are making use of the fact that I haven't <laughs> I've never researched embarking <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Fine, a piece. I've, I've subjugated everyone now. I'm all, I'm all good. Global networks. Oh no. We're going to be making the media. Let's move on from that as soon as we can. Just focusing on things that give me tech right now. As much as I love focusing on science, I do have other resources I need. Like information. Information. Oh my lord. Now, at this stage of the game, I could continue my military expansion and just wipe the world. But I am so far ahead technologically now. Land isn't really needed, so don't bother bother with it. Got good alliances with everyone. We can get a good alliance with Zulu soon. It looks like they're all fighting amongst themselves. The peasants are fighting whilst I just thrive, you know? I mean, every time a chaos event pops up, which they do from time to time, I just pay them off. Well, the game thought about itself for a second, but we have now finished information, which means the world has been revealed to us. You can actually see now that this is Egypt's empire. They have some fairly big cities. 35 pop. 37 is their biggest. That's not bad. It doesn't beat my 47 and my vassal of 45, but still, you know, it's okay. If you rush the internet backbone in this age, you get, well, a lot of wealth, and that gives you information because, well, it's the internet. I mean, digital libraries. Oh, we're starting to get some really big numbers now. Smart grids. I want to be building five of these. Uh, no reason. No reason at all. Here we go. Five buildings complete. The Age of Archangels. Is it the most efficient age for me? Probably not. There's something about it that's just very fun. Might be the huge space lasers, you know? That, that could be it. Uh-oh. Zulu has declared hostilities against me. They have one island. Um, all right. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna wait and see what they do. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I've invented, I've invented the Dogecoin. Or maybe not Dogecoin, maybe more Ursa coin. Gives me 15 wealth. Is that it? That feels like a, a terrible innovation, I'll be honest. I, I think I got scammed. Sort of makes sense, really. Uh-oh. What are we doing? We're building a satellite array that can eliminate major populations and regions in a blink of an eye. Oh yes, achieve victory by controlling more than 50% of the world's living population. You know what, I think that's going to be pretty easy. I mean, I already have 273%. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, look. It's a satellite array. Hmm, better build that. I'll change your system. Oh, it's so good. Zero percent. And uh, there you go. <laughs> that was easy. So basically what happens is if you conquer more than half of the world, or you have an aggressive vassal strategy, all you need to do is get through to the last stage and click that. And unfortunately, there's no way of really going beyond this point. I can't actually show you what this looks like to fire, even though it's really fun, because there's no way of playing one more turn on this game. Alas, I can view the map. Let's have a look at the map. I'd begun work on a repeatable tech in order to charge the battery up quicker and we were getting one of ten charges every turn. Then we could have fired it and it would have been really cool. It looks a bit like the sort of Hammer of Dawn from Gears of War, doesn't it? Very cool. Do a quick tour of the map. My 49 population Rhizantium with Dad Tato on the coast. Cal and Billy, helicopter kicker and a banana. There's another Dad Tato. I have a feeling I renamed and named uh, a few things repeatedly. Port Portland, Clint, the dual city of Clint Super Stevo. This was actually quite the powerhouse in my empire. I enjoyed that Callum Billy just hiding there. Polar Waller Bear. We're not going to see it all, unfortunately. Just a good chunk. Gooberman, Jono, Perkinsy, Mixomatosis, Tilki, Skeptical Bear, Dr. Bobby, Garrett Gowan, Zaf. I mean, you can see the just obscene amount of population that we control at this point. Look at this mountain range as well. How crazy is that? That is a ridiculous amount of aether in this area. Oh, I really should have controlled this. Like, taken over, say, Bordeaux or somewhere like that. Egypt still had a fairly decent chunk of land, but we don't mind about that. Awesome Aki, Helicopter Kicker 2, Cartesian, Sean Kelly, again, the dual system, the double city. I'd almost unlocked enough points to bring in Garrett Gowan, who would have been the second biggest city in the game. Look at all this space. Two towns. The map is packed. All of my vassals have now grown to the point where there's basically no spare tiles on the map. There's little bits here and there, but yeah, we've conquered everything. What a game.
game though. What a game, that's Millennia Grandmaster difficulty. I hope you enjoyed that run. I really, really did. I can't wait to play more of the game. I think maybe we'll go for a peaceful run next time. Something more diplomatic, something a little bit tasty. Until then, thank you so much, everybody. See you all next time. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlezord, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, The Knickerman, Bob Loblo, Davalex. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.